Happy Monday, all you Mintees. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. And join me today for an advanced look at the Jessica Jones alias Omnibus. So, please stay tuned. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on December 7th. So you don't have to wait two weeks or three weeks in the book market to own it. But here we have the latest printing of Alias. It is now rebranded as Jessica Jones Alias. This has been previously printed twice, uh, once in 2014. And I think the original printing, when I got it, it was 2006, I want to say. But this is the very first Max comic book that Marvel Comics printed. And I'll tell you a little bit of history about that here in a second but let's take a look at this cover here as well as the spine and then the back of the book and it does show explicit content so this is mature rating now let's go back to this angle because this is the direct market cover on your left hand side is the standard edition cover and you can tell that the artwork on the spines are going to be different as well but let's get back to this so like I mentioned, this book has been previously released, and it was just called The Alias Omnibus. I think a lot of people probably got it confused with the TV show that was going on at the time with Jennifer, was it Jennifer Gardner, I think? But anyway, yes, now we are calling it The Jessica Jones Alias Omnibus. All right, so what we're looking at here on the left-hand side was the second printing of the book the one that came out in 2016 i want to say was printed at the donnelly printer this is printed at the imac printer however it does have my dust jacket from my original printing that came out in 2006 and the reason it has that was because my original printing of alias busted so i had to buy it again and i like the dust jacket on the original printing i like that cover by david mack and that's why i decided to keep it and in this one here the max comics line is huge and the explicit content is big but yes the spine is different because it shows alias and now we have jessica jones alias marvel omnibus bendis and gatos and then of course the picture they use here at the bottom is different the back of the book is different as well where this shows you all the covers from the comics that are collected in here with the exception of the what if comic and then here they just show this piece by david mack under the dust jackets just a very subtle difference with jessica jones at it the alias logo is a little bit smaller but you have jessica jones there on the spine and this is pretty interesting but even the back picture is different even though it's the exact same pose of her at her desk all right so let's get this book opened and talk about the premise, a little bit about the story and the plot, without going into too much spoilers, and then do a comparison with the printings. So let's go ahead and get started. Get some black and pages there. Alias, with the alias investigation window there. Here's all your creators, written all by Brian Michael Bendis. Michael Gato supplying 95% of the artwork in here. Uh, but you also have Bill Sienkiewicz, David Mack, Mark Bagley, Rodney Ramos, and Al Vey and R. Tebert supplying some of the inks as well. And here's an introduction from Alan Heinberg, uh, who has written for the OC. And the reason I knew that was because of The Amazing Amanda. Uh, but he's also written for Sex and the City and Gilmore Girls. But I'm sure most comic book fans know the name because he's the one that introduced us to the Young Avengers. Now, I mentioned that this is mature content, completely mature content. So just keep that in mind. There's going to be a lot of use of strong language, sexual content in here, um, and not over the top violence, but mainly those two, mainly the strong language, just about every page. As a matter of fact, this starts off with the F-bomb. And part of the reason why they wanted to create this Max line was because they wanted to write stories like this. So a little history behind the Max line. It was an imprint from Marvel Comics back in 2001 is when it started. And the reason that it started was because at the time Marvel had broken away from the Comics Code. Um, the Comics Code had been a big part of not just Marvel Comics, but comics in general since the seduction of the innocent and the breaking down or breaking apart of the EC comics. 
So the Comics Code was created, and then in 2001, nah, we're done with the Comics Code. It's time to get out of that and do our own thing. So the Max line was created, and the Max line, like I said, was more like, I want to say like the Epic line, not the collection, not the collected editions, but Marvel's Epic line that they had back in the 80s, or think of DC's Vertigo line or Black Label line. Stories that took place not necessarily in the Marvel Universe, but they could do whatever they wanted with the characters. Uh, the creators had almost free reign with the characters. Jessica Jones is one of the few stories that takes place in the 616 universe, but like things like Wolverine Max or Deadpool Max, those are in their own pocket universes and have nothing to do with the 616 universe, other than the characters being based on 616 characters. So this collects alias 1 through 28, and what if Jessica Jones had joined the Avengers? And it has 720 pages retailing for $100. And what you saw earlier was this young lady and Luke Cage. And that led to some, uh, how do I put it? A meeting after the bar, if you will, for a one night type of meeting. So the character of Jessica Jones is pretty interesting. The idea behind this comic, the idea behind this series, was to actually use Jessica Drew, who was already a private investigator, who had lost her powers, but this is a little bit different. And then when Bendis and the editor started talking, they were like, you know, the story I think is way, way more than Jessica Drew and what we want to do with her, and since we want to keep it in canon, writing a character like Jessica Drew in these circumstances would keep us from keeping it in the 616 universe so they stuck it to creating a new character named jessica jones who becomes alias who runs alias investigations so this is broken apart by several stories she does several private investigation things the first issue the first few pages is this man trying to figure out what's going on with his wife behind the scenes and it turns out that jessica discovers that his wife is a mutant and he makes a comment like oh i'd rather her be cheating on me and you know he gets a little abusive with her so jessica who has super strength and the power of flight just throws him through her windows and she's like i'm gonna be charging your ass for that and that's the type of character she is this shows the underbelly of the Marvel Universe. A lot of the dark tones and themes that happen that the normal superheroes don't deal with is what you see here. The closest thing to this would be something like Daredevil, who uh, Brian Michael Bendis was writing at the time. So the first story arc is her trying to figure out why Captain America is murdering women. And you can find out for yourself how all that wraps up. Uh, there's also the missing Rick Jones issue. She starts. You start seeing her relationship with characters like Carol Danvers, how close they are. And then she starts building a relationship with Scott Lang. They go on a date and they start moving forward with their relationship. So what I was going to say is that this is her first appearance. Even though she's shoehorned into the background history of the Avengers, like she was always a part of it, which is something similar they were doing with the Sentry, except what, without all the mind wipe that came with the Sentry. But in this, you know, it's almost like a retcon. Like, yes, she was a superhero known as Jewel. She played a big part in the Avengers, and then she decided to give up the superhero life because something unfortunately happened to her. And... That's all retcon. This is her first appearance. So don't be confused that this is an actual character that you got to go and find her first appearance in the pages of the Avengers or Thor. This is where her first appearance took place. And she's just kind of shoehorned into the Marvel Universe. And for the most part, it worked because of the type of character that she is lurking in the shadows. And when I said something horrible happening to her, that's the type of story that you will find in here. They're not the happiest of stories. As a matter of fact, they're quite depressing. She is very detrimental to her own health. Like, her mental state is not... You know, it, it's the exact opposite of something that you see going on in the pages of Fantastic Four. Not that they've had, you know, the happiest of times, but the way they deal with things are very optimistic, and that's what makes us keep reading those stories, right? For the optimism, and that no matter what, good will always triumph over evil. Whereas this shows 
the way things would be dealt with in the real life by real people. That's why a lot of people are drawn to this particular story. She's not the nicest character. She's not the happiest of characters. She's very true to life. And I know some people don't like seeing that in their comics because they want to escape from reality of life and all the troubles. So that's perhaps why some people didn't like this. But it does show this gritty, dark, nasty, dirty side to the Marvel Universe that you don't really see. And all of it completely uncensored, you know, because of the Max label. So... She also has dealings with Daredevil in here. As a matter of fact, there's an issue in here. If you're reading it at the same... Let me get to it. Yeah, Right here, issue number 15, which kicks off another storyline with Spider-Girl. We'll get to that here in a second. But if you're reading this along with Bendis' Daredevil, I can't remember what issue of Daredevil it was. Uh, this is the exact same scene you see in Daredevil, except you see it from this undercover blonde. And you'll see what I mean when you read the pages of Daredevil from... Her and Matt Murdock's perspective instead of Jessica Jones and Luke Cage's perspective. thought that was really cool. It does help, of course, that the same writer is writing both books to do things like that. Uh, but this is also the storyline. This is a dark, twisted story with Spider-Girl. And this is the Maddie Franklin Spider-Girl. But who ends up showing up here is the original idea for this whole book. And that is this lady right here, Jessica Drew. I love this appearance because Jessica Drew was one of my favorite characters during Claremont's run in Wolverine after she had lost her powers. And he brought her back out of obscurity because, well, she's got a, her own convoluted storylines, but now she's back. And this is before New Avengers, of course. So it was before Jessica Drew, powers restored, New Avengers, even though she's usually in them here. But hey, uh, it was really cool to see her. Speedball, though. Not so cool. Uh, <laughs> well, that's another topic. But anyway, you are going to see a lot of Easter eggs. You are going to see a lot of familiar faces through these pages. Maybe not the way that you remember them or think of them. Uh, you have characters like J. Jonah Jameson that are in here. Uh, you have the Avengers show up because there is a flashback story. This one here, which is heartbreaking. So this whole idea of just you know bad things that keep happening to her really starts with her own origin story. And it's a depressing origin story. But you do have artwork in here by Mark Bagley, like when she is with the Avengers. But all of that is told through the pages here. It's, it's, like, it's almost like the last few chapters when you find out exactly how she got her powers. And then the final story arc is probably the one that a lot of people are familiar with because of the TV show Jessica Jones. And that is the Purple Man. I think it's just called Purple. But it's about, you know, this character that first appeared in the pages of Daredevil. Uh, he's fought the Thunderbolts. He's actually a part of X-Man for a while. But, you know, this goofy type of character. And Bendis is able to just make him a twisted, dark character. And one of the most menacing characters in the Marvel Universe. And some of that you saw in the page... Or, in the episodes of Jessica Jones. And it all came from this particular storyline. It's dark as hell. And then you get the what if story back here in the back that features Jessica Jones. And uh, what if she had joined the Avengers? But that wraps up this entire omnibus. Let's look in the back here for some original art pages. Michael Gatos' sketchbook. And he usually uses photos, too, uh, as references. And you have some stuff here for from David Mack, like the covers. Sketchbook introduction. This is the David Mack sketchbook. There's just all types of different David Mack art. And you can always tell with his little triangles that he adds everywhere. Uh, this is the introduction from the original hardcover of Alias, written by Jeff Loeb. And then on the opposite side, you get the farewell from Brian Michael Bendis. Now, the series did continue into The Pulse. It wasn't a max line then. We'll look at the binding here. Uh, and then uh, there was a 2016 series just called Jessica Jones. And let's take a look at the binding. So the book is sewn binding. And here's what the eye looks like. Again, this one is printed at the iMac printer. And it does have some thin paper. Let me show you what's going on here. 
you do have some wave at least this particular volume that I have here my my review copy pointed at the light source back here you can see some of the waviness that is happening towards the first issue like the entire first issue has this waviness it gets better and better but I did want to point that out like like that uh, by the time you get to the second third issue you're the book is okay. I don't know if every copy is like that. It could just be my copy, but I did want to point that out. And the paper quality is thinner than the second printing that I have from the Donley printer. That could be part of the issue, why we have wavy lines like that. And the other thing I didn't uh, point out is that as I was flipping through here, <laughs> make sure to skip some of the uh, sexual content, but as I was skipping through here, this is the type of artwork you're going to see. Uh, this is what people call the Bendis talking heads, where sometimes the frames are just people's faces, and all you see are just word bubbles, and there's a lot of that in here. There is some action sequences, but this is more of a noirish, crime, crime noirish slash detective story um, that just features a very depressed super ex-superhero. And this is the type of art to expect. There's a lot of zoom-ins. There's a lot of the same picture going on. And all Gatos does is zoom in on the exact same frame. I'll use a couple of examples here. Uh, like this here, right? Like that's the exact same picture, except he's zooming in more and more. And you will see that throughout the book. I don't know if, you know, if that's something, this is the Bill Sienkiewicz stuff about Rick Jones. But I don't know if, you know, if that's something that bothers you, but I did want to point that out, that that is something that he does throughout the book, is use the same panels over and over with different angles, zooming in closer, and this is the talking heads I was speaking of. Now, let's do a comparison to the second printing. All right, so just a comparison here, in the way the book lays over towards the very front of the first issue. Here you have the original printing and the new printing. New printing looks like it's using some darker tones for the cover. And the color tone seems to be a lot more golden in this, if that makes sense compared to the original printing for this type of scene right here that we're seeing with issue one. It's the exact same issue, just looks like it's got a darker golden tone than this here. And a little bit of that going on here in the next page. Now, I did want to do a comparison here. Actually, let's do this with the new printing here on the right hand side. Um, you will see some of the artwork come through from the opposite page because of the paper quality being thin. However, that was always the case. Even this second printing right here from the Donnelly printer, a completely different printer using a little bit thicker paper, you still see the artwork come through from the other side on the white pages. Uh, it will happen in both cases. Matter of fact, I'm looking at it right now. It could be that the light source is a lot stronger over here on the right, but they are identical as far as, let's do that, the art coming through from the opposite page. Just want to point that out, as I know that bothers some people, and other people don't care, but I did want to go over that. This is the way the book lays over towards the middle, and then the back of the book. Again, the tones in the new printing seem a lot darker, which honestly I think helps the grittiness of the story. It seems like the scans that they used for the second printing were a little bit lighter. And you can tell here with the sketches in Gatos' artwork. There we go. Let's do a close-up so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. See how much darker the blacks are here than this second printing. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first-time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. 
And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus, as well as the comparison to the previous printing. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read the series, what you think about it, if you have the previous printing, if you want to see more collections featuring Jessica Jones, like The Pulse, or her series from 2016. Again, this was The Uncanny Omar. If you have any questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon on amazing ways to support the channel and more importantly everyone please stay healthy stay safe out there and much love